Um, well, let me uh, speak to you for just a few moments about what they were so uh, uh, wonderfully depicting. If you'd go to Luke, the first chapter, please. Luke chapter 1. The narration was from, uh, largely from these first two chapters of Luke, where what we, we have recorded, what we call the, the Christmas story. And uh, something that I believe the Lord has quickened to me this morning is very exciting. In Luke 1 and verse 30. Lord, we pray that you'd enable us to hear your words right now and that everyone that does not know you would be able to draw near and receive you. And everyone that does, every one of us that do know you would come to see you clearer and know you better. We ask it in Jesus' name. We ask for the utterance and anointing and for your presence in our midst in Jesus' name. Luke 1.30 said, The angel said to her, Fear not, Mary. Fear is one of the biggest problems on the planet. Yes. So much of what people do that is wrong and a mistake was rooted in fear. They did it out of fear. Yielding to fear, acting on fear, allows the enemy, the destroyer, to work in your life. Yielding to faith, acting on faith, allows the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, to manifest and work in your life. He said, fear not, Mary. We, we, we know that God did an amazing thing in Mary, but what's the first thing that he dealt with? Don't, don't fear, we're going to do something here. God's got an amazing plan, but we've got to get you to stop fearing, and then we're going to do this. You found favor with God. Keep reading. Behold, you shall conceive in your womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great. <laughs> you know, God doesn't exaggerate, does he? <laughs> he shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. In recorded human history, great civilizations have risen Great kingdoms have risen and lasted for centuries, sometimes longer. But many of these kingdoms you cannot find today. That's right? right? Yes. The Roman Empire, for example. You can find the ruins. And it's la it lasted many times longer than, for instance, our country has existed. And there's coming a time where there won't be any kingdom of China or Russia or United States. There'll be one kingdom. Oh, hallelujah. And this kingdom will never end. There will be no rise and fall of this kingdom. This kingdom, of his kingdom, there shall be no end. Oh, glory to God. Do you believe it? Verse 34, then said Mary to the angel, how shall this be, seeing I know not a man? How can you have a child without an earthly father? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit, goes to an old English word, others say spirit, shall come upon you, and the power of the highest shall overshadow you, Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of you shall be called the Son of God. <laughs> How can it be? It's, it seemed 
an utter impossibility. How can you have a child without a father? How can that be? And there are many today do not believe this. They say it's a, it's a fairy tale. It's, a, it's just a story. It's not real. Did not happen because it, because it cannot happen. But that just means they don't believe in God. And when she asked that, the angel told her, the Holy Spirit, is the Holy Spirit real? He's going to come on you. You know, the Holy Spirit can be in you. He can also come on you. He will come on you and the power of the highest shall overshadow you. And in his presence, the seed, the word of God, will become flesh. Hallelujah. Inside you. Don't need human means. Well, God created all this to start with, right? And he created it all with his word. Therefore, that holy thing which shall be born of you shall be called the Son of God. He went on to say, and behold, your cousin Elizabeth... She has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Oh, hallelujah. Say it out loud. For with God, God, nothing nothing shall be impossible. impossible. Say it together again. For with God, God, nothing nothing shall be impossible. Now this is, I believe this is the word the Lord's quickened to me and to you today. With God, nothing shall be impossible. He's talking specifically about Elizabeth who couldn't conceive when she was a young woman. Now she's older, past the change of life, similar situation to Abraham and Sarah. And yet, she has conceived. Miraculously. Somebody say, with God, God. nothing is impossible. (laughs) And here is a young woman who's never been married, never had relations with a man, and who is, who has conceived now. (laughs) Somebody say, wow. (laughs) How Can this be? With God, nothing is impossible. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody say, with God, nothing is impossible. Let me read you another couple of verses. You don't have to turn there, but this is a theme that runs throughout Scripture. Back in Genesis 18, 14, when people were questioning the Lord about something, He said, is anything too hard for the Lord. Well, actually, this was concerning Sarah conceiving when she was older. Same situation when there, you know, you remember when the angel told Abram and Sarah was back listening about this time next year, you're gonna gonna have a, a baby. She laughed, right? She thought you got to be joking. Old as we are, and. And, and, and I couldn't conceive when I was young. And, and that's when the angel of the Lord said, is anything too hard for the Lord? Jeremiah thirty-two seventeen says, Ah, Lord God, you've made the heavens and the earth by your great power and by your outstretched arm. Did he? Did he? Did he create the sun, the moon, planet earth, our galaxy, the other galaxies, the universe? That we have no idea, we have no idea how big this thing is. If our sun was a period, a period, then our galaxy is the size of the continental United States. That's just our galaxy, just our backyard. Well, for a being who can make this, 
Why would we think anything is too hard, too difficult for him? Why would we think it unacceptable and impossible that there could be a virgin birth? Hmm? If you believe in, if you don't believe that can happen, then you don't believe in God. You don't believe he's real. You don't believe he created the heavens and the earth. And you live in a dark, bleak world. Hmm? No hope in life and certainly no hope after it. I'm so glad I don't live in that dark place. We have hope in this life. And oh boy, do we have hope after this life. Oh, somebody say glory to God. Glory to God. He went on to say in verse 27 of Jeremiah 32, he said, I'm the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Now that's the Lord himself talking. He asked us a question. Is anything too hard for me? How many think you know the answer to that question? No. No. Now here's, here's something that you, you and I should shout about the rest of the week. Nothing Jesus did was only for himself. Nothing he did. From the conception to the resurrection. And even right now, being at the right hand of the Father, where he ever lives to make intercession for us. It was, none of it is for him. It is for us. And since he became flesh, became a man, did it all as a man, he did it for man. And since he had no sin to pay for himself, it was all for us. Everybody say, all for us. All, all, for, us. all for me. All for me. And what you see is that redemption is everything he did, we get. And everything, everything that happened to him happens to us. Has happened is happening, and will happen. Let's start at the end and work our way back. He was raised from the dead. Amen. <laughs> Anybody read the scriptures? What's going to happen with you? He, I'm telling you, everything he did was not for himself. It was for us. And everything that happened to him has, is, will happen to us. When this dawns on you, you won't be able to wipe the smile off your face. <laughs> Was he raised from the dead? Yes. What's going to happen to you? Yes. According to the scriptures, yes. there's going to be a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Yes. Hallelujah. You're going to be changed. Your body is going to become like his glorified body. Is that right? You're going to be raised from the dead if you had died, or you're just going to be changed. But either way, what happened to him in the resurrection is going to have his body is going to happen to your body. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? What happened to him will happen to you. Come on, say it out loud. What happened to him will happen to me. Now, coming all the way back. He was born by the Word of God. Are you listening? The virgin birth also typifies the new birth. They're both miracles. If you don't believe in the virgin birth, then you're going to have difficulty believing in the new birth. Right? And if you don't believe that that could happen, then you may not believe that you can be saved. Yeah, but I've had people tell me, but preacher, you don't know what I've done. And you don't know how I've been. You don't know. And I say quickly, yeah, and you don't know. 
the power of the blood of the Lamb. You don't know the power and grace and mercy of God. It comes back to believing that with God, nothing. Oh, somebody's getting it. Is impossible. If it was possible for the Word to become flesh, the miracle of the conception and birth of the Christ, then you can be born again. Is that right? I said you can be born again. He was born by the spoken word and by the power of the Holy Spirit coming over him. And so can everyone that believes on him be born again. How can these things be? The power of the highest will overshadow you. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit will come on you and come into you. And all things will pass away. And all things will become new. And you will be a new creation in Christ Jesus. Oh, somebody say hallelujah. I believe it. I believe it. Oh, glory to God. Jesus talked about individuals trusting in money and things instead of God and it being hard for them to be saved. And when he said that, Mark 10, 26, the disciples said, who then can be saved? To them it looked like an impossible thing. But with the Lord, is anything too hard for him? Jesus looked at them and he said, with men, it is impossible. (laughs) With men, a virgin birth is impossible. Resurrection from the dead is impossible. Saving yourself, changing your nature, your spiritual nature, with a man doing it, doing it for yourself, impossible. Fixing and straightening out your life in your own strength, impossible. Impossible. Getting good enough to be a part of the family of God forever, impossible. But not with God. Uh, But not with God. For with God, all things are possible. What does that mean? If it's possible for a, a young woman to conceive supernaturally, it's possible for anybody to be born again. It's possible for anyone, no matter how darkened, evil, cruel they may have been, to become completely changed inside. And not only that, once born again, transformed by the renewing of their mind and become more like the master every day and every night. And to be molded and trained until they are eventually capable of ruling and reigning with him in the kingdom that shall not end. And if you looked back far enough, you'd have shook your head and thought, that's impossible. That God would take that, that, that being, that individual, and they'd become this. But with God, I said with God. With God, nothing is impossible, and all things are possible. Oh, is this powerful? Is this, this, this is shouting ground. Go to John, please, first chapter. Just a few more minutes. John 1, this whole chapter is uh, looking at what we, we heard about today, what the children portrayed today from the other side. Uh, Luke is looking at it from the human side, spirit inspired, but what happened on the natural flesh side. But begin in John 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, 
And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. The Word did not begin in Bethlehem. Hmm. The Word, skip down to verse 14. And the Word was what? Made flesh and dwelt among us. That's what happened in Bethlehem. Glory to God. Did you know the Word is still becoming flesh today? Hallelujah. Anybody been healed by the power of God? That was the Word becoming flesh. Hallelujah. The Word can become flesh in the form of a new organ. A new body part. Something changed and recreated in the brain. Hmm? And if you balk at it, you didn't hear the first part. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Did he create the heavens and the earth and everything that's in it? And the galaxies and the universe? Did he? Did he? Then what's so hard about this? Back up to verse 9. Verse 9. Jesus is the true light which lights every man that comes into the world. He was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. That's a sad thing, isn't it? The creator, the master comes into his own creation. And the creation says, no, we don't believe in him. We don't want him. Verse 11, he came into his own and his own received him not. That's sad. Verse 12, but, aren't you glad it doesn't end on the sad part? But as many as received him, To them gave he power to what? Become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Keep reading. Which were born, oh, just like he was born. Not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of a man but of God. Anybody born again in here? The same thing had happened, portrayed by the children, where the Christ was conceived supernaturally in Mary. That's what happened to you when you were born again. Am I exaggerating? Am I reading scriptures? Come on, back up to verse 12, verse 12. But as many as received him, have you received him? And if you haven't, you ought to say yes right now. I do. I do. I'm looking at you in the camera too. I do receive him. No matter where you are, you can say it right now. I do receive him. I do believe and I do receive him. And to as many as received him, to them gave he power. That can also be translated the right to. The right to become a son of God and the power to make it happen. Power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Not, keep reading, verse 13, not They were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of a man, but of God. Keep reading. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father at that time. If you read later scriptures, now He's called the firstborn of many brethren. Man, I'd have come and preached this just to myself this morning. 
the firstborn now. And then he was the only begotten. Now he is the firstborn of many brethren. Who's the many brethren? To them, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> them that received him. Received the power and the right to become the sons of God who were not born by the action of any man but by the power of God, the Holy Spirit came on us. The power of the highest overshadowed us. And that which is born in us is holy. Holy. We have been born again, the sons of the living God. Oh, somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise God. Stand on your feet if you would, please. Thanks be to God. There ought not be one person leave this building not born again. Or leave Sarasota. Or leave from watching on these cameras. How many agree? Not one, not one. Not one person Or to leave lost. If you would just close your eyes and focus on him. Who did he give the power to the become the sons of God? Those that received him. Those that believed on him. He came to his own. They didn't receive him. They didn't believe on him. But to everyone that does, he gives the power to become a son of God. Hallelujah. Said out loud, every voice, nobody be silent. Every voice. Said out loud, Father God, Father God I do believe in you. Forgive me for unbelief. Forgive me for making you wait on me. I should wait on you. You should not have to wait on me. I believe in your son. The greatest gift ever given. And I receive him. I receive what you have given to all mankind. To me. I receive full salvation. I receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. I receive new birth, new creation, cleansing and washing of sin and forgiveness of every failure and every mistake. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Just lift your hands. Begin to thank the Lord. For the power to be made a son of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say it out loud. I confess Jesus. Lord of my life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord.